Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about how I set up the Canon R6 Mark II for sports photography. So from the generic settings into the customizable buttons that I have assigned to be a bit more efficient. Okay, so before we get into the menus, let me just show you the buttons that I'm going to be talking about. So for the aperture, I did not change, so I'm going to leave it as is here on this wheel because I'm just used to it. Same for the shutter speed here, I'm going to leave it here, and the ISO here. So these, these ones I did not change, okay? The ones that I did change were the rate button, which you can find right there. The multi-function button, which you can find here. The rec button, which you can find here. Uh, back button focus, so that's, I've already made a video about this in the past, so that's also changed. And then in the front, hopefully you can see the depth of field preview button here. I have assigned uh, a function for that as well. So those are the buttons that I have changed uh, the functionality of. And now let's switch to the menus so that we can talk about the menus themselves. Okay, so looking at the menu, you can see it's in M, so it's in manual. That's where my camera lives. I understand that some people might like aperture priority or shutter priority. I like to be in manual, so to each their own. Uh, for shutter speed, I usually say that 1,000 of a second is a good starting point, but that obvious that depends on the ambient light that you're gonna have. So if you're in a poorly lit situation, you might need to slow it down a little bit. If it's a bright sunny day, you will need to increase it, obviously. Then for the aperture, I usually I'm shooting at 2.8, which is what my 7200 or the 400 mil uh, can open to, the widest. Um, that being said, it doesn't mean that I will always be at 2.8. It could be that I close it down a little bit, say if I'm shooting uh, starting 11 or some detail in the audience where I want to capture a bit more in focus, so I will close it down. But for the most generic part of the action shots, it'll be in 2.8 and the ISO then I leave it in auto and it will compensate for the shutter speed and the aperture that I have chosen. That being said, I'm always looking at the metering to make sure that I'm in the middle so I don't overexpose or underexpose. Then we have the customized controls, the buttons that I spoke about, we'll get to those in just a second. For white balance, I leave it in auto to be honest with you. Uh, I don't have an issue with it unless I'm, I'm in a really, really poorly lit situation or in a gym or whatever, then I'm actually shoot in raw and then I can adjust it in post. But usually it's in auto and it does the job just, just fine, absolutely fine. For the SD cards, so the Canon R6 Mark II has two, I shoot redundant and what that means is that it's going to shoot exactly the same in both cards. So that way I have a backup. If I select this, you can see uh, the options that you have, but that's how I do it. I like to record both of the same images to each of the cards, so I always have a backup. I shoot in JPEG most of the time, to be honest with you, even though RAW is more powerful, no question about that, but I trust my ability to get a proper exposure, and to be honest, I don't need to do that much editing. If I'm in a situation where I really, really need to recover a lot of highlights or the, the picture is completely underexposed, then one of two things, I'm either doing a really bad job or the lighting situation is really bad or I messed up a lot so I don't think that I would be using raw that much because again I trust to be doing a good job in the exposure and for most cases it works just fine. For the autofocus points let's go here actually uh, if we were talking about a DSLR I'd be going for the single uh, point the middle one but because this camera can detect humans I actually found it to be a bit more useful to expand it just a little bit more and use this one instead. However, in some situations where the camera, the camera is struggling to find uh, the focus that I want, then I will change the single point. But for the most part, I use this expanded AF area and it does the job just fine. Obviously, AI servo, that doesn't need to be set. Uh, metering, evaluative metering is the one that I use most of the time. Uh, some situations will require me to use spot metering, for example, if I'm shooting against the sun, but for the most part, evaluative metering does the trick. High speed continues, so I can shoot uh, 12 frames per second, uh, and that's it. So these are the main settings. Now let's talk about the 
customizable buttons okay so now let's talk about the customizable buttons the ones we talked about at the start uh, needless to say I use back button focus so when I have press it's just metering it's not focusing so that's changed that's one of the changes if I continue down and give me just a second because I messed up there we go so this one you can see it's the record button because for some reason Canon thought it would be a good idea to have a record button that you can use while you're in picture mode. I don't understand this and I really don't want to accidentally be pressing this button and start recording a movie when I'm taking shots. So what I did was I used the magnifying glass for this specific uh, button and for the multi-function and I messed up again let's go back so for the multi-function, which is the one you can see highlighted there in the screen right now, I have play. So let me show you how this works. So if I press the multi-function, it's going to show me the picture that I just took. And if, if, if I press the record button, it's going to maximize. So then I can zoom in and see if it's in focus or not. And, and that's the way it works. I can continue and move to the next image, do the same thing. If I want to zoom out, I zoom out. And that's pretty much it. So I find it very, very useful to be able to see uh, the pictures with my eye in the viewfinder without having to um, remove it. Then the AF button, obviously I use that to focus. I have made a video about back button focusing if you want to check it out. Uh, so this is the one that I press to focus. And then if we continue, just a second. So the star one, this one is easier if I show you. So let me try to show you. You see the focusing point? So what I did for the star uh, button is to force it to go back to the middle. You saw that? So it goes back to the middle. So sometimes if the camera is struggling and I want to force it to go to the middle, instead of dragging the joystick to the middle, if I just press that one, it goes straight to the middle instantly. So it's, it's not a, a button that I use that often, but when I do, it's very, very helpful. And then finally, I have decided to change the rate button to actually lock pictures. So you can see the padlock icon there. So if I want to lock these, I can simply press the rate button and it's going to lock uh, those pictures for me. So if I'm importing these into a photo mechanic, I can import only the locked photos. Say if I'm using Lightroom instead and I want to star the pictures, then I have changed that to the depth of field preview button in the front of the camera so I just press that instead so I can actually do both if I want to I can start them and I can lock them it really depends on what I'm going to be doing at the pictures at the time if I need them uh, right there and then on pitch side I'll be locking them if I just want to check them out later I'll probably be starring them or I can do both so these are the settings and the buttons that I customized there's just one extra thing that I did which is create a menu with some of the settings uh, that I cannot assign a button to. For example, to switch from mechanical to electronic, I have that here. If I want to have a multiple exposure, so these would be found in different uh, menus. This way I have them all in one um, menu. So I, it's easier for me to access these uh, settings. And last but not least, I forgot to talk about the focusing, obviously. So subject to detect, needless to say, it's people. Eye detection, I leave it on auto. I really don't care if it's the right eye or left eye that is focusing on. Uh, to be honest, I'm quite far away from the people I'm photographing. I'm not doing portraits. So in this case, auto does the job just fine. I have heard that disabling eye detection can make the focusing slightly faster. I have not seen that, to be honest. I have no issues with it focusing fast enough. So I leave it at that. And then one final thing is the cases. Uh, case number two for me has worked the best so far. So basically it tries to ignore uh, possible obstacles that will interfere in the, in the play. So if I'm focusing on a player and something crosses in front of the camera, it's gonna try to ignore that and stick to the, to the subject that I had. Uh, if that does not happen, I, le I leave the autofocus back button button off so it starts focusing and then I force it again but usually for the most part it does a really really good job if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit that thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you aren't already until next time take it easy guys stay safe